Hey guys, welcome back to World of Tanks. My name is Bruce and today I want to show you the tier 8 British medium tank, the Centurion 1. If you're interested in more reviews and gameplay, go to YouTube and search for World of Tanks with Bruce to get all of my videos or click on the subscribe button and now let's go. Now let's first of all take a look at the armor profile of the Centurion 1 and as you can see the turret armor is superb. The Centurion 1 does have an excellent turret with uh, quite some armor. Um, as you can see the turret is pretty much uh, not penetrable for your tier 8 opponents besides maybe the Coppola but it is very very uh, small. Um, and if you are using your 10 degrees of gun depression then uh, you can even hide the Coppola as you can see here. Now the problem with the Centurion 1 is the weak hull armor even if you are using your 10 degrees of gun depression your upper hull is only 150 millimeters so every tank that is playing against you um, even yeah most of the tier 6 tanks will be able to penetrate your hull so that is um, what you have to keep in mind playing in the centurion and if you want to know how the armor um, in such a tank works and how you can play hull down check out my video um, about the hull down guide that I, that I made because in this video I explain everything you need to know in order to successfully play hull down. As you can see, the side of the tank is super strong, so um, you can you can uh, yeah use side scraping uh, with this tank. And um, now let's see what changes if we compare the Centurion One not against the Tier Eight against the um, 226 millimeters of penetration on the uh, yeah on the Centurion One, but against a uh, Tier Nine tank with a Tier Ten gun. Or you know what? Let's just take a Tier Ten gun and let's take the where is it? The Leopard One with its superb 278 millimeters of penetration. As you can see, there's not much that changes. Yes, the sides, um, you will, the, the Leopard 1 does have a 66% chance of uh, penetrating this little portion here, maybe this little portion here, and also uh, at the right side or at the left side of the gun. And also there are some, the, some uh, parts of the gun mantle basically next to the gun right here and also right here that are um, that uh, the Leopard 1 could penetrate. However, the rest of the gun mantle is super, super strong. And so most of the turret is uh, not penetrable even for a tier 10 tank like the Leopard 1. Um, and that is um, how superb the turret armor of the Centurion 1 is. Now look what happens if you change to um, the premium ammunition of a tier 10 tank. The sides of the um, of the turret will be able to or will be penetrable, yes, and also as I said, parts of the gun mantle. However, the rest is still super strong, and um, the rest is also like as you can see here a ricochet angle. So you will even bounce shots against the tier 10 tanks, even if they use um, the uh, the premium ammunition. Now, how do I play the um, the Centurion One? I play the Centurion 1 with um, turbocharger, with vents and with um, coated optics. Now you could argue to use um, gun rammer instead of um, vents, however um, I think that the uh, DPM of the tank is uh, just so low that it doesn't give me any advantage whatsoever to use um, a gun rammer. It, it, uh, it, I think the you will improve your um, your reload time um, with, uh, I think it's less than a second, so for me it doesn't make sense. Yes, the DPM is, uh, is super low, um, but you will not increase it significantly with, uh, with a gun rammer. Um, yeah, and uh, my crew does have six cents, obviously, brothers in arms, um, and then I leveled up the gun handling skills. Um, I'm currently leveling up, um, or I leveled up situational awareness. I could also have leveled up safe storage, which, ex which is extremely important on the British medium tanks, and I will definitely do this next. And then I am currently working on repairs and recon, and next will definitely be concealment, and as I said, safe storage. Um, so this is how I play the Centurion 1. All right, here we are in the first game on steps and let's first of all take a look at the map. Starting on steps from the north, the situation looks like this and the options that you have in your tank is you can either either play defensively here 
um, you can try to go to the one lane um, and maybe go here or here. However, what I usually want to do, uh, depending on the team, and uh, especially if I have a Haldon tank, Haldon strong tank, is I want to go here um, if I get support and then um, try to use this little position here um, in order to um, yeah play hull down against the enemies that are uh, trying to win the northern flank. So this is exactly what I want to do and as you can see the turbocharger really helps me um, to increase my, my mobility and to go into those positions um, quicker and that is in my opinion a huge advantage. So um, let's take a look at the weaponry of the tank. Um, 1919 base DPM is pretty bad for a tier 8 tank. The alpha damage of 230 is also pretty bad. Um, however, the penetration is good, the gun sets are good. However, um, yeah, the British medium tanks um, do have a disadvantage. You really have to fully aim in your shots if you want to hit your target um, over some distance. Um, yeah, th that's, uh, that's it about the weaponry and as you can see my goal here is now to play um, Hull Down. However, in a Centurion 1 you really have to watch out to not expose your hull at all because not only your, your lower hull but also your upper hull is weak. And if you um, want to know more about um, yeah, playing hull down then just watch my video um, that I made and in this video I explain every little de detail about uh, playing hull down. Alright, so um, the advantage that I have here is um, the T32 does have a strong turret, however he does have a cupola on top and as you, as you could see um, we could uh, manage to hit his cupola. Um, so that is an advantage. My cupola is on the right hand side, his cupola is also on the right hand side. How, however, um, this is an advantage for me uh, playing right here. And um, the advantage that I have is I have support from the IS-3, from the Scorpion and also from the SDA-1. So as soon as the T32 will peek out um, too much, he will get shot uh, by my teammates, which is a very nice situation. And meanwhile, let's see if we can get a shot on the chariot here. Yeah, um, the position where the chariot here uh, was is um, yeah a, a common position for uh, tank destroyers, but also for medium tanks. And um, so you can really um, just blind fire this position, especially if there if you can see that uh, a tree was knocked down. Okay, so uh, that was a bad trade. Um, the T32 managed to get a shot on us and now it looks like our team is making pressure so we do want to help our team. Um, however, I'm still concerned about the position of the Pantera P44 and maybe some other teammates there. So, alright. Um, our team managed to kill the T32 so it is time to advance. Um, if we take a look at the mobility, um, the top speed of the tank is 50 uh, kilometers per hour, reverse speed 20, horsepower 750, so this is why I think it is a good opportunity to use the turbocharger on this tank. Um, and then the power to weight ratio is 16.7, uh, 16.7, which is pretty nice. As you can see, we have to fully aim in the shot, and then if you take your time to fully aim in, then you will make your shots with the British medium tanks. Yeah, unfortunately, the ELC even uh, went right in front of us. Um, yeah, uh, 10 degrees of gun depression on the British medium tanks um, is pretty, pretty nice. And then, um, yeah, the rest of the mobility stats are um, yeah, pretty much uh, not too bad. Um, talking about the terrain resistance values. So um, the tank feels quite mobile, um, not as mobile as um, some other medium tanks. However, with a turbocharger, um, the tank is, uh, I would say, mobile enough and it, and it feels pretty agile with the turbocharger. Alright, so in this situation what I do not want to do is I don't want to um, press to the K9 or K0 position. Instead I want to try to flank um, because on the H, what is it, the, no sorry, not the H, the G8 position um, I can play hull down and in this tank, in the Centurion 1, I always want to use my strong turret and I always want to try to find a hull down position um, in which I can use my strong turret armor. So this is exactly what I want to do and we are lucky we can spot the enemy um, artillery and now once again we have to fully aim in. 
luckily enough we were quick enough to make um, this shot and we already made 1600 damage 770 spotting damage um, the problem with the centurion is it's low dpm so that means that most of the time you will not be able to just farm the the enemy tanks in uh, compared to to other medium tanks with high dpm um, that's just how it is um, the strength of the of the centurion is its turret armor um, it lets you play aggressively much more aggressively than for example in a, a lightly armored medium tank um, however, this comes to a price, uh, and that is the low DPM and also the low alpha damage. Alright, once again, we... Yeah, here you go. We get a shot on the on the other artillery, and now it is time to just move forward and to um, try to spot the rest of the enemy team in order to get more damage. Okay, there's the Zoo 101. Unfortunately, he is at full hit points. That is nice for us. As you can see, um, the Centurion 1 is not good at making uh, snapshots, so that is um, yeah, just not an advantage um, of this tank. And now, right, that was a, that was a stupid oh, yeah. gameplay. However, as you can see, um, okay, too bad that this shot did not hit. Um, if the Su 101 has shot, then you do have to move out of cover to take your shots. Maybe you can even take two shots. Um, if you're playing in a tank like the, like the Centurion with a rather small reload time um, compared to his high alpha gun with high reload time so um, so that you just trade as positively as you can okay so we uh, could finish him off now there's one tank remaining let's see if we can get another shot on the P44 doesn't look like um, we made 2000 almost 2700 damage 900 spotting so uh, 3800 combined which is very nice and let's jump into the next game all right here we are in the second game this time we are on secret lines starting from the north and once again let's take a look at the map Starting in the north on Siegfried line, the situation looks like this usually and the options that you have is first of all to go here on this side. However, I do think that this area is quite risky. Um, so I prefer to go either here, uh, this is a defensive position, or I uh, prefer to go here um, in order to get um, side shots to the left side of the map or to support um, yeah, the tanks that are working here in the middle of the map. Okay, so we are going to uh, take that position. Looks like we're not the only tank going there. Okay. And, um, yep, I directly want to go to the um, D5, D6 position because I am tanked with uh, a nice um, turret armor. Let's see if we can get a shot on him. Nice, that is super, super important that we could take out or that our team could take out the enemy wheeled tank. And now um, we just want to stay here and um try to oh, sorry sorry is 2 2 um that was that was my mistake and we just want to try to punish enemy tanks that are doing one or another mistake now another advantage of the centurion one is the fantastic view range of 400 meters which is super nice maybe we can get a shot if you fully aim in okay that was lucky maybe another one on the stg nope um, yeah, um, so as I said, fantastic view range and um, it does have 1450 hit points and um, as you can see the turret armor is fantastic with 254 millimeters, even um, uh, 88.9 at the side and um, the hull is weak, as you can see here only 67 millimeters, um, so even if you use your gun depression, your hull armor is pretty pretty weak and that is um, a real disadvantage, for example, compared to the uh, premium Centurion, the Centurion 5.1. Okay, so um, we want to take a shot on the enemy team. However, maybe on the Coppola, no. 
Um, we did not hit the cupola, the weak spot. Alright, so, um, yeah, looks like the enemy um, tanks are playing Haldown in that position. Maybe we can get a shot on the Type 59 if he moves out of cover. Sorry, dude. Uh, maybe on the T44. Oh. Not uh, should have fully aimed in. Get those support by the Lansen, which is nice. And um, as you can see, the, sometimes the gun is not the most precise one. Um, we aimed at the um, at the gun mantlet, um, and and as you could see, um, obviously the the armor on the gun mantlet is uh, too strong. However, as we missed the gun mantlet, we made damage, and then uh, and at the next shot, we actually. Um, Pointed uh, beside the or next to the next to the gun mantlet um, to the armor that we are able to penetrate. However, we did not hit. Okay, the Carnarvon is over angling his tank, um, so that gives us the possibility to get a shot on him. And now, once again, a shot into his lower hull. Nice, and we should be able to finish him off. Okay, looks like the Lansen C also wants to make damage. Looks like the IS-22 here is in our way, but maybe we can overtake on the left-hand side. Yep, here you go. And let's see if we can make some pressure on the Bisonte. However, the Bisonte is in a good hull down position. And obviously we have to play carefully because he has a three-shot autoloader, actually an auto-reloader. So if he peeks out, um, he can deal up to um, approximately 900 damage. So uh, we just want to wait until he's tur turning his turret uh, because our teammate is making pressure, the 50 TP, which is nice. And now it looks like he is moving towards me. However, I can hide behind the rack of the T44 and now the 50 TP is finishing him off. Very nice. Okay, so it looks like um, I will not be able to go this way and also looks like the, the game is pretty close, 9 to 8. So we do need to support, we do need to keep supporting our team in order to win the game. Maybe, yeah, here you go, the IS-3 Alpha is peeking out. Okay, that shot was not fully aimed in, however, we were lucky and we um, hit the IS-3 Alpha. Uh, he hits our gun, not too much of a problem. Nice, he's uh, finished off, he's taken out of the game and now the game actually seems to be in our favor so let's just move out maybe we can get a shot on the Rogetto no but maybe we can flank the uh, WZ 132 and get a shot on him yep every tank is taken out um, except for the enemy light tank and the tank destroyer and now this is a yeah this is a a situation in which I definitely want to use auto aim um, because the armor of the enemy light tank is uh, is uh, pretty weak everywhere, and then I can just um, concentrate on my driving. Um, and yeah, here you go. We can take him out. Two thousand seven hundred damage. Once again, uh, this time only two hundred spotting, but that's all right. Um, yeah, another nice result, and let's go into the last game. Third and last game on mines, and as usual, let's take a look at the possibilities that we have on this map. Starting in the north on the map mines, there are not too many options that you have. You can go to the little island here. Um, sometimes with a fast medium tank, you can even try to push down here. However, this is a super, super risky play. Um, and then the other option that you have, and that is what I usually like to do is, I do not want to rush the hill. Um, usually, because that is also a very risky gameplay, I usually want to go here and then uh, try to uh, punish people that are uh, that are trying to rush the hill um, and then also um, trying to get crossfire on the enemy tanks that are uh, playing in this position. Okay, so we are going to the middle of the map and um, I really do think that this is a very smart game play um, because we can first of all punish the enemy tanks that are trying to rush the hill. This means that we will support our tanks that are rushing the hill. Um, the hill is super important on mines, um, in my opinion the most important position. Here you go, first shot on the AMX 1375 and then can we get another shot on the T20? Yes we can. 
super nice. And now let's see, maybe the object 274, yeah, is also doing a mistake. I wanted to track him, did not work out. However, we could get, we could get another shot and here you go, even a second shot on him. So um, first minute of the game, 1000 damage, 950, super nice. And we supported our team um, and with this made sure that we could win the hill. All right, nice. We could finish off the enemy Hellcat. And let's now see. The The only problem we have is obviously we do need to play um, defensively, um, meaning that once we are spotted, um, obviously tank destroyers from the, from the uh, rear of the map can shoot at us um, if we are peeking out or if we are keeping, uh, if we're continuing to peek out that's what i wanted to say all right maybe we can get a shot on the canavan let's see i think i will uh, try to track him however i did not make any damage which is too bad and now here you go now we can track him and um let's see here you go we can keep tracking him however he's using his repair kit go and maybe our artillery will do the rest for the canavan now i really have to watch i do have to watch out where he is looking but now he's falling back all right perfect perfect all right perfect start on mines i think this is how you should play mines uh, from this side and now it is time for us to move into the middle on the hill um, to keep making pressure um eight to three with the hill means that the game is uh, yeah i would say one at least in 90 percent of the times of the games and um the only thing on the hill is that you have to watch out to not um get proxy spotted that is the first thing however it seems that there is no other enemy tank right here um and now we just want to um here go see if we can spot tanks on our own and uh, get some more damage right, maybe on the weak spot of the t28 or the cupola however the gun is not precise enough however this uh, yeah this would have been a pixel shot so um i think i cannot blame the tank um and now i think 10 to 4 i think it is time to just move out um and push into the enemy base yep that's what we are going to do we are at full hp so um, we can just push into the enemy base and um, um, with this maybe get some additional damage um, and actually i don't care if i will lose some hit points um, yep i will use this house in order to uh, yeah hide a little bit so um, that decreases the chance of uh, being hit and now let's just move out and let's just try to spot the rest of the team. Here you go. Ah, here you go. He's falling back. That gives us the, the chance of getting another shot. Maybe. Okay, let's see whether... Okay, the T28 is looking towards us. That is bad, so we have to fall back. Uh, but maybe if he peeks out, then... Um, we will definitely proxy spot him, so... Alright, oh, I think... And my idea here was to, to flank him, however, he is staying behind the rock, so I, I think I will now just... I will just keep moving out. He's even t turning his turret, uh, turning his tank. He has shot, so um, that is the time where I do need to get my second shot, because my reload time is faster than his. Nice made a shot into his lower hull and then once again he has shot so i can peek out and get the next shot here we go let's see here you go so um yeah 2200 damage in the centurion with his uh, with its low dpm and um, in a game that only took uh, five minutes and i think it is another nice game with the centurion one Alright guys, that was it for today with the Saturian 1. What do you think about this vehicle? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. 
consider subscribing to my channel and I see you next time in another World of Tanks video.